What's up, it's your boy Bishop, and I'm back with another video. Yo, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, guys, for all the love and support. Truly appreciate you, and I could not be doing this without you guys, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, without further ado, we're gonna get into this video. So we're gonna be checking out Bill Maher and his more re most recent monologue on human nature, slavery, and just like Thomas Sowell, he kind of tells the truth. And people are really mad about that. So without further ado, let's get into the video. You can get creative with a novel, a TV show, or a movie, but history books, that's not supposed to be fan fiction. How we teach our kids history has become a big controversy these days, with liberals accusing conservatives of wanting to whitewash the past, and sometimes that's true. Sometimes they do. But plenty of liberals also want to abuse history to control the present. And last month, a scholar named James Sweet caught hell for calling them out for doing just that. He criticized a phenomenon known as presentism, which means judging everyone in the past by the standards of the present. It's Yo, I've never heard of this. So, as you guys know, a lot of things I'm learning as I go on this journey of enlightenment, understanding, and just kind of getting a grasp on the history of things, the truth about things. Um, but if you guys have heard of presentism, let me know down in the comment section. It's the belief that people who lived 100 or 500 or 1,000 years ago really should have known better. <laughs> I can imagine how that can be a problem which is so stupid. It's like getting mad at yourself for not knowing what you know now when you were 10. <laughs> stupid me, spending all that time raising sea monkeys and <laughs> <clears throat> playing with slot cards and jerking off to a playboy in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't have moments from your past that make you cringe? Who hasn't said, I can't believe I said that? I can't believe I wore that. I can't believe I thought that. I can't believe I did that. You ate dirt. <laughs> you wanted to be a I ate glue. You know the paste actually? I ate paste. And I don't care what nobody says. It was sweet and delicious. <laughs> Ghostbuster, you shoplifted gum. That. I can't believe I thought that. I can't believe I did that. You ate dirt. You wanted to be a Ghostbuster. You shoplifted gum. So you tried to be a white break dancer. You obviously I didn't. You wanted to marry Scott Baio. <laughs> I read Ann Rand. <laughs> I smoked. I was into numerology. Yes, because we hadn't then grown into the persons we would become. And humanity writ large is just the collective version of that. Did Columbus commit atrocities? Of course. But people back then were generally atrocious. And see, this is part of the problem when you start judging the way people were then compared to how our understanding has evolved now. They didn't know what we know now. And the people before them didn't know what they knew then before that. But this is what happens when you have a plethora of information and new revelation and understanding. You start to judge people based on what you would do today as opposed to thinking, who would I have been then? It's like the person who says, myself, I'm guilty of saying things like, man, if I was around doing Jim Crow, they wouldn't have done that to me. But they probably would have. Because I would have understood that in the system as it was then, I wouldn't have had much say. And that's unfortunately the reality. People back then were generally atrocious. <laughs> Everybody who could afford one had a slave. 
including people of color. The way people talk about slavery these days, you'd think it was a uniquely American thing that we invented in 1619. But slavery... What about 1619? Shout out to LFR. Some of y'all who watch his, his videos, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uniquely American thing that we invented in 1619. But slavery throughout history has been the rule, not the exception. The Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Greeks, Romans, the Arabs, British, the early Americans, all the way up through R. Kelly. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, Bill. Come, come on, Bill. Not R. Kelly, man. Now don't, not, go, come on, man. Come on, man. I mean, it's true, but come on, man. Not Kells. We rock with Kells. No, we don't. But his music is still fire. I don't care. Nobody say cancel me. His music is still fire. TP12 is probably the best R&B album of the 90s. Or TP2.com, I mean. Debate me. Let me know in the comments section if you still like R. Kelly music. All the way up through R. Kelly. <laughs> The Holy Bible is practically an owner's manual for slaveholders. The word slave comes from Slav because so many Slavic people were enslaved and they're as white as the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> Who do you true. think gathered the slaves from the interior of Africa to sell to slave traders? Africans who also kept their own slaves. We're a species prone to making others of our species our bitch. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. Humans are not good people. <laughs> See, that... That's a difficult thing, I think, for most of us to accept. That human beings are flawed on our best day. That on our best day, we are prone to treat each other horribly, to do horrible things to one another. This is why we have wars. This is why people commit crimes. Because when put in certain situations, people will revert to their base nature, which is not necessarily very good. The Bible says, that we are all born into sin, shaped in iniquity, right? It says that the heart is utterly wicked, and who can know it? So if even God understands, this is why we need a Savior, Jesus to come as the atonement, God knew that the moment man fell in the garden, we were, were horrible. We're not good. But if you say that, people are saying, oh, no, humans are, are genuinely good. No, we're not. We have good qualities. But if we are forced to, to, to survive, we will do some ho horrible things. It would be like the walking dead. And humans are not good people. <laughs> And the capacity for cruelty is a human thing, not a white thing. That's the truth, even though it doesn't jibe with the current narrative. But in today's world, when truth conflicts with narrative, it's the truth that has to apologize. Being woke is like a magic moral time machine where you judge everybody against what you imagine you would have done in 1066, and you always win. It's true. Presentism. Yeah, this professor is right. It's just a way to congratulate yourself about being better than George Washington because you have a gay friend and he didn't. That he knew of. I mean, there have been rumors of presidents, statesmen. We know the Greeks 
We knew the Romans, they engaged very publicly. You think it stopped with them? But I digress. Because you have a gay friend and he didn't. <laughs> but... <laughs> but if he was alive today, he would too. And if you weren't alive, if you were alive then, you wouldn't. Portland Public Schools has a plan now to teach kids that the idea of gender being mainly binary was brought here by white colonizers. The curriculum guide says, when the United States was colonized by white settlers, their views around gender were forced upon the people already living here. <gasps> Not even Star Trek would try that story. <laughs> <laughs> where they discover a planet and give them separate bathrooms. <laughs> it's like they finally discovered a unified theory of wokeness, incorporating all their ideas about race, gay, gender, and colonizers, like the New World was a great big diverse dance club and the pilgrims were the bridge and tunnel crowd who came in and ruined everything. <laughs> There's a play called I, Joan, currently being presented in London, written by Charlie Josephine, who identifies as non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. And it portrays Joan of Arc as surprise non-binary with they, them pronouns. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, makes even less sense because Joan, being French, spoke a language where every noun is masculine or feminine. <laughs> Joan says in the play, I'm not a girl, I don't fit that word, as if she's a character on Euphoria. And again, this is the problem when we start playing with reality. Gender is genetic. Otherwise, we'd all come out with both parts or no parts. And we would just reproduce. I can't think of the word, but we would just spontaneously there'd be no need for a copulation because we would just you know produce our own kind male and female or whatever we'd be and when you start to try to rewrite history you look stupid and if you call the people stupid then you're a bigot and you're as, as people would call me all kinds of different things. But again, I digress. Now, it's true, Joan of Arc did wear pants, but that's what the soldiers wore and she was soldiering. But in the retelling, Joan would rather die than stop wearing men's clothing. Okay, Joan of Arc wasn't executed by the fashion police. <laughs> Her trial went on for over two months. We have the transcript. And not once did she complain about being misgendered. She had bigger fish to fry, like herself. <laughs> Too soon, it was 1431. <laughs> Which is not to say that there isn't truth to the old rubric that history is written by the winners, and it is subjective. Napoleon said history is just a fable we all agree on. And he should know because he was a deaf woman named Diane. <laughs> but it's also true that much of history is indisputably factual because we have artifacts and coins and birth records, and archaeology, and somebody in Mesopotamia kept a record of how much grain they ate. It's not all up in the air to change or delete or make up based on what makes you feel better today. A couple of years ago, they made a movie called The Aeronauts about the scientists who broke the record for the highest altitude in a balloon. In fact, they were both men. But the movie made one of them a woman because, as the director explained, representation is important. So true. Women never get enough credit for the things they didn't do. And see, that's a problem. 
you cannot rewrite history to include people who were not involved in said history. Otherwise, it's a fairy tale. There is not an agenda, patriarchy, wo- uh, uh, gender, uh, uh, what is it? The conservatives trying to usurp authority. It is facts. And as Larry Elder said, Thomas Sowell has told us, facts don't care about your feelings quoting Ben Shapiro, but other scholars have told us this in their own unique way. You either allow the facts to speak for themselves or you make up whatever you want. And unfortunately, history does not favor feelings. I think Meryl Streep should play Seabiscuit so every girl will know she too can grow up to be a racehorse. <laughs> and Meryl Streep would probably be a phenomenal Seabiscuit. She's a phenomenal actress. But again, I think Bill spoke eloquently to the reality of what we're facing in society. We cannot continue to just rewrite the rules, rewrite the history, make it up as we go. Because just like we judge the past today, in the future, our descendants will look back on us and we need to be careful that they don't ask the question, what the heck were they thinking? And why were they so stupid? But that's all I got for you guys this today. I thank you so much for coming back and checking out my videos. You guys could literally be anywhere else on this YouTube. You choose to come and check out our videos here at Fisher Corner Reloaded. And I thank you and I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. For all the new subscribers, welcome to the congregation. Thank you so much. And for those of you who are watching and have not yet subscribed, please consider hitting that red button. Consider hitting that thumbs up to help with the algorithm and hit the bell notification so you're notified every time we drop a video here at the Bishop's Corner. Now, I have not forgotten about the giveaway. I'm still trying to figure out the most fair way to choose a winner. Um, so bear with me. We are at about 1,200 subscribers now. We definitely want to get to 2,000. So we're working. We're diligent. I'm back. Um, I'm taking a little bit slower this time. I got a little burnt out before, so just bear with me. Um, and as always, stay safe. Know that I love you. God loves you more. But next time, peace. See they waiting on my